Hi Sagittarius. This is your December reading for 2018. We're going to do a love and general life reading with the Tarot Mucha deck with a Celtic cross. And then I'm going to have some oracle cards out for you to clarify with the crystal healing deck, divine feminine oracle, and the romance angels. So let's start with Sagittarius and what's in store for Sagittarius. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for December 2000. Wow, look at that. King of Pentacles. Some of you guys, when I do your readings, the cards just pop out. And some of you guys, it's just very restricted. And I have to kind of really do it on my own. But you've got Death and King of Pentacles so far. And I know Sagittarius right now, you guys have a really, really lucky face. With the, align with the planetary situation of Jupiter. You guys are in a very, very karmically blessed time right now to reap major rewards. And from what I've seen and heard, it's supposed to be major for Sagittarius, Aries, and Pisces, but mostly for Sag. Okay, so let's continue shuffling. Keep that in mind that you got King of Pentacles and Death on the bottom. This is for Sagittarius, please. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for... December 2018. They just want to pop out, my goodness. This is for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, please, for December 2018 in the form of a Celtic cross. For Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for December 2018. This is for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. When a card pops out, I'll stop there and go from there, but I just want to make sure I didn't stop the first time because it was just too early in the shuffle. And I want to make sure I shuffle off the cards real good. So here we go with Sagittarius. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for December 2018 in the form of a Celtic cross. Okay, a sign here. On the bottom, Page of Cups, a message from someone younger. Uh, so it could be representing someone very sensitive, poetic, patient, emotional, sweet, gentle. Could be a child as well. Your child, possibly. Okay. You right now, what did I say? Wheel of Fortune. <clears throat> Your challenge. The High Priestess. Conscious, you have Eight of Wands. And the foundation or subconscious, we have Justice. Let me see if you can see that. Oh, it's a little tight. That's better. Okay. Recent past, Nine of Pentacles. Recent future, Knight of Cups. You know, we got the Page of Cups on the bottom, right? This is the Knight of Cups. Okay. You right now, Ten of Pentacles. Around you, Knight of Pentacles. Hopes and fears, Hanged Man. I'm going to put this a little lower here, okay? And the end result, Queen of Cups. So let's read this. And I tell everybody, I'm going to read you the meanings of the cards, and I'm going to try to put together a message here. But when I'm reading it, there are high vibrations to the cards and meaning, and there are lower vibrations. I like to read higher vibrations because I think there's enough negative cards. But as I read the meanings to you and I tell you what I think it is, you can always for sure gauge for yourself how it resonates with you because you will know your situation much better than I do. When I watch readers and I see what they're saying, Sometimes they're so definitive about this is this and that you don't know though because really it could apply to people in different ways. So I don't like to say that. But you might catch me saying that sometimes. I, anyways, uh, if it's clearly that way. Here's Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune is about major change. If things haven't been going so great, if things were going okay, this is like a huge flip. Now things are going to be awesome. 
if they were okay before with this Jupiter situation going on right now for Sagittarius, you guys are going to be really coming into some big time luck, big time good fortune. The kind of thing like you, this is your soul crying out for what you've always wanted. That's what you're going to get, what you're going for. It might not manifest for all Sagittarius, but it's there for you. The energy is there for you guys. This is amazing time, an amazing time for you guys. Your challenge is the high priestess. This could be also a Virgo sign. Um, and the high priestess is about someone who is extremely intuitive, psychic, and it's a major arcana card. you got a major arcana card here and a major arcana card here. And it's also about secrets. Also with these... Um, I'm not going to go into detail, but with the astrology right now, the thing is that for those of you who are doing healing work or um, into spiritual things, spirituality, it's a major time for the revealing of like esoteric secrets and things like that. If you have been pursuing that for a long time, I'm not saying because I got the Queen of Cups here at the end and I'm just, I don't want to skip ahead, but that's a majorly intuitive card. This is a major psychic intuitive card as well. So you've got the 10, uh, sorry, you've got the Wheel of Fortune and then this challenge. And the High Priestess is like also, you know, as I said, the keeper of all the secrets, right? Divine knowledge. So your challenge is the High Priestess. Um, consciously you have eight of wands, you have so much energy, so much enthusiasm. You are so full of vitality and life right now with ideas and whatever you're trying to manifest and create because wands are about fire and male energy, but it's also about creativity. And it could be also, um, Aries, Leo, Sag, right? And you are Sagittarius. So, you know, fire signs basically is represented through wands. You have a major creative energy going on right now, consciously in your mind. You're full of energy and enthusiasm. Your foundation is justice. Justice is about finding balance. Justice is about being fair. It's about karma. It's about things working out fairly as it should. Whether you be on the receiving end on the good side or the, the you know punishment or whatever it may be. Everything works out fairly. Justice is the reassurance that everything will be fair. So you have this in the foundation and you basically are feeling that you are going to be fair about things you are going to be just about things and have a balanced attitude towards it um in the recent past you have nine of pentacles nine of pentacles is about being stable and having worked towards your material world and establishing yourself to the point where you don't depend on anyone else you're self-sufficient and you've been enjoying the single life. It's also a single lady card. It could be a male or female, but basically it's about going it on your own and being independent and having created a lot. And it's also a card of mastery because in the eight of pentacles, you were working hard to perfect your craft. And now at nine of pentacles, you've mastered it and you've gotten these rewards. This lady is relaxing, right? And then you have a message from spirit coming in going, there's more to life than just the nine of pentacles. There's more coming in. And so it's a call for, again, I see a very spiritual calling here. So then you have, going into recent future, the Knight of Cups, a message coming in from a young, younger, young man or a woman. It's in the 20s, early 20s or early 30s. Um, up to early 30s and then it could be represented by water signs but it's about em someone who is emotional and you know romantic this is very like the knights as opposed to the kings they're always you know younger and more a little bit more unseasoned than the kings but the knight of cups is like a romantic dreamer poetic very um, you know sensitive and when they're on the horse and they're a knight, they're bringing in messages. Pages bring in messages. Knights bring in messages a little bit more quickly. But this is an offering. See, they're offering a cup. They're offering emotions. They're offering a relationship. They're offering something of emotions. But this is you. Ten of Pentacles. You see a ten here and you see a ten here. It's about completion. Look at you. 
you've manifested ten of pentacles. This is not just about having coins. It's about having a legacy. It's about being so established socially, economically, that, you know, you have a lineage. You have a legacy going on here that even your grandkids are going to benefit from. Surrounding you is the Knight of Pentacles. The energy of either you're in this energy or someone around you is representing this energy. And the Knight of Pentacles can represent a Virgo. It's an Earth sign. The Pentacles are about Earth, which could be um, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. But at the same time, it's about slow and steady progress. A lot of people joke around and say this Knight of Pentacles, like you'll grow old waiting for the Knight of Pentacles because he moves so slow. But the good thing is they are moving towards their goal. They will get to their goal and they're very, very loyal and dependable. Like all earth signs, they're awesome. But the Knight of Pentacles is someone who you can depend on. So if you got Knight of Pentacles and you got a Knight of Cups, this looks like a good person. Really, really great person. Because if you have the romance and the sensitivity and then you have someone who's also extremely dependable, loyal and hardworking, I mean, that's amazing. Then you have your hopes and fears. This is the hanged man. And you've got a lot of spiritual cards here because the hanged man is a very spiritual card as well. You can see by this golden aura around his head, you know, he's put in this, himself in this position. He's sacrificing. It's a card of sacrifice because he's not there for funsies. You know, he's doing this because it's serving a greater good. It's about waiting and having to be in stasis for a moment because there are things going on with divine timing and you are doing this and you're holding back because you are sacrificing for the greater good of all other things to work out for everybody else involved. So this is your hope and your fear. Maybe you're afraid of being stuck too long in this position. Or you're hoping, you know, to, to be of use and sacrifice to others, to serve others. But... In the end, your Queen of Cups. Queen of Cups is the queen of love, queen of intuition, psychic abilities, a very, very, very intuitive and psychic card. And you got that with the moon, right? She's a queen. She's older. She's established. Extremely loving, gentle, nurturing. You got the Knight of Cups. You have a lot of loving energy around you. Very peaceful, very beautiful. You can feel that. Okay, so again, we had at the bottom page of cups, right? A lot of cups here, a lot of love. Okay, so let's go to Romance Angels for a clarifying card. Can we get a Romance Angel clarifying card, please? For Sagittarius. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. This is for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Fell out, kind of. So I'm going to take it, okay? Because it literally nicked me on my thumb. Ooh, passion. Where is this now? It says, allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. And we look at the bottom as well, okay? Stay optimistic about your love life. Positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. So we'll look at the side. Keep that in mind. And there's passion here. So let's read about it. Okay, your prayers for great love have been heard and answered, and it all begins with you. You have the power to revive passion in your life. In fact, no one can bring it to you but you. This card guides you to seek that which brings you great joy, such as a hobby, cause, or special activity. Anything that stirs your heart with joy will help passion bubble forth and positively flow into your romantic life. The Romance Angels say that having a passion for life itself is a requisite foundation for feeling passion in your love life. This means enjoying this moment completely, and when you do so with a partner, you inspire him or her to romantically participate with you. If you're presently single, you can definitely enjoy passion in your activities and hobbies, and who knows, such pursuits may provide an opportunity to meet a wonderful partner who shares these passions. Okay, so it's saying, if something's gone out, like this candle just went out. 
you and no one else but you have the ability to reignite that. I'm going to now read to you. Let's just put that back there. I'm going to read to you the message from the Romance Angels Guide for that card. Oh, I did. I just did. Didn't I? Yeah, I did. Okay, sorry. I'm, I'm forgetting here. Okay. Next, we're going to have a Divine Feminine Oracle card for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for December 2018. And just because it's a Divine Feminine Oracle card, don't worry about it. It could be for male or female. But these cards are just so awesome. I have to use them. I love them. Such deep meanings, beautiful pictures. It's about, you know, goddesses and ascended masters, female ascended masters. And I just, it's one of my favorite decks. It resonates so deeply with people. Okay, so here we go. This is for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for December 2018. Can we please get one goddess? Divine Feminine Oracle card for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for December 2018. Just one card, please, for guidance. For December 2018... Since the card didn't pop out, I'm going to pick one. This is for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for December 2018. Okay. We have on the bottom the Black Madonna, Our Lady of the Hermits. I transform pain and suffering into a greater capacity to love. The one we're going to get here in the front. Ooh, Goddess Lakshmi. The goddess of abundance. I choose to feel abundant. Wealth is an inside job. Okay, so let's read this for you guys. It's not in alphabetical order, so I'm going to look it up. Goddess Lakshmi, 72. 7, 8, nine. 7 and 2 is 9. 9 is like the hermit. Let me see. Okay, 79, I'm just saying the seven and two and the numbers and stuff, they do have meaning because I saw on the bottom of the Divine Feminine Oracle deck, there was the Our Lady of the Hermits. Hermits also, you know, in the tarot deck, a major arcana ruled by Virgo. So you can take that as it resonates with you because again, High Priestess challenges of Virgo as well. Okay, so Lakshmi is over here and I will read that. Okay, where's Lakshmi here? 72. Okay, the goddess of abundance. Lakshmi personifies the splendor and affluence that arrives when we align our action with what the soul desires most for us. Reverence for the Hindu goddess Lakshmi dates back to the first millennium BCE. She's known as the goddess of wealth, fortune, and prosperity. Look at this 10 with the wheel of fortune. And the Ten of Pentacles. Okay, that's the last time I'm going to interrupt. Okay. Reverence for the Hindu goddess Lakshmi dates back to the first millennium BCE. She is known as the goddess of wealth, fortune, and prosperity. Her name is derived from the Sanskrit root laks and laksha, meaning to know, understand, or to have a goal. She is the wife of the Hindu god Vishnu and has many festivals that are celebrated in her honor. In the ancient Indic, Indic epic, the Ramayana, Lakshmi is said to have miraculously sprung from the foam of an ocean of milk churned by the gods. Lakshmi is often pictured in her iconog iconography holding the lotus. This is symbolic of the fact that great beauty arises from the dark richness of the earth under any circumstances. All that's needed is the auspicious or divine timing for the lotus to come into bloom. Her essence then is about understanding the goal in life to realize the abundance of the soul. When your soul selects her card, abundance looks different to each of us. Some people have incalculable material wealth, but are bereft of a sense of purpose or a greater vision for their life, and so are left feeling lost. While others are considered poor in financial wealth, but walk around radiating love and, kind of, and the kind of light that has an inestimable worth. 
Lakshmi is the auspiciousness that begins to bloom in our life when we align our every action with the work our soul has come here to do. Lakshmi reminds us of the ultimate goal, which is not making money, but being able to know our true bliss. What makes us feel lit up like a glow stick while we're doing it? What work doesn't feel like work at all? Lakshmi is a wink to find that vocation, that bliss, so that what is within us comes into full bloom through something we can do and show the world. Lakshmi represents both the gold we can hold in our hands and the gold we can become by doing work that feeds our soul. She's the reminder that true abundance doesn't come from our bank statement. It comes from a state of mind we enter when we know we are contributing great worth to the world in the effort of becoming more love. Soul voice meditation is when do I feel the most abundant? The intention is I choose to feel abundant because wealth is an inside job. Beautiful. I'll put that up there because she's a goddess. And next we're going to finish with the crystal healing cards. Can we get one crystal healing oracle card for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for December 2018? Something that Sagittarius can work with. And even if you don't have the crystal and you don't work with crystals, you can still look at the picture, find a nice... Ooh, my goodness, you got three. I'm serious. Like, I don't even get three cards for other people. I get one or two. Two, to me, is special. But I like to look at the bottom. Past life, lapis, lazuli. You got three. I'm going to go with it, okay? So you got first one, pyromorphite, patience. Again, if you don't have these stones, because... Most people don't go to, you know, crystal shops and stuff. But if you don't, just get a picture of it. Look at it and, you know, let that get into your subconscious and you can work with that. And I'll read you the meanings for them, okay? Opal, joy, beautiful, right? Last one is dioptes, heart healing. Okay, so I'm going to read you these. I'm going to read you... The message from the Crystal Deva there for these cards, starting with Pyromorphite. Okay, so Pyromorphite, this powerful card in Crystal reminds you that patience is required in certain aspects of your life right now. Trust and know that divine order is at play. At times, it's easy to rush through life and wish to hurry things along. However, at this time, you are guided to allow things to flow at their own pace. If you have asked about a specific issue, you are being encouraged to hold back, be patient, and give it a little more time and space before you make a decision. It's not the perfect time to move forward on this issue. Tune inward and be aware of and honor any frustration, impatience, or resistance that may arise in this process. Hand these feelings over to the Crystal Devas for healing and transmutation. Remember to breathe, center, and be present with yourself and enjoy where you are at right now. Take a moment and trust that all is taking place for your highest good, even if it does not seem like it right now. Patience is one of the great virtues and mastering it can truly set you free. Before you know it, the moments will flow by and patience will gift you with many blessings. This card can also be a reminder to be patient with yourself and those around you. And that's the lime green color and it's related to the solar plexus and heart chakra. The green color is related to the heart chakra. You also have heart healing over here. But next I'm going to read you Opal. Hi Sagittarius, we got cut out because my storage ran out. But I'm going to read you quickly Opal and Dioptes. So Opal we have, it's a range of opaque colors and it's related to all the chakras. So it says the Devas of Opal are encouraging you to lighten up and stop being so serious about life. It's time to laugh and have some fun. Joy is one of the most powerful forms of healing and transformation. If you've been feeling a little lower under the weather, now is the perfect time to transform through this place into your joy once again. The Devas of Opal are inviting you to live a little more in their world and discover or rediscover sorry, the joy and laughter that feeds your soul. Have fun, dance, play, run, jump, let go, get creative, do anything that ignites the joy within. And finally, Dioptes. Dioptes, Dioptes. It's emerald green. It's related to the heart chakra for heart healing. And it says, we spend our lives in and out of relationships, trusting people, and along the way we get hurt in the process. The natural survival instinct is to shut down and protect the heart from yourself and those around you so you don't get hurt again. This can cause a huge disconnection in your life as you walk around numb from the pain of these old wounds and scars. 
The key is to hold yourself and love yourself through your hurts, keeping that beautiful loving heart of yours open and alive and free to love no matter how painful it can be. Love, in caps, is the essence to all healing. No matter the situation, know that deep heart healing is at hand. The loving devas of Diaptis have now arrived to shower their healing light into your life. Open and allow this energy to touch your heart deeply and fully. You are encouraged to take some sacred time out for yourself as your wounds are transformed back to love and compassion. Spend time in nature or by the sea to nurture and support you in this healing process. It is perfectly normal that you may experience a loss or sadness flowing through you as you release and heal from this pain. Or perhaps... You could be feeling joy and freedom as you allow a deeper level of divine love and forgiveness into your heart. It is now time for you to come back to your heart's center as you experience the sacred time of heart healing and transformation. So Sagittarius, that's your monthly reading for December 2018. I hope that resonated with you. Uh, please check in for your weekly readings and I'm going to have daily readings up soon after I finish these all 12 signs. Um, and that will be for just general energies. So until then, take care. See you later. Please check in again. Have a wonderful holidays. Bye-bye.